I would like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us to our 25th Friends of Mana. This is the first Friends of Mana event that we've ever held virtually, and I'm very excited to have you all here with us. Whether you're a donor, a contributor, a volunteer, or someone who just cares about affordable housing, thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Now, we've got a lot going on, but I will say, please join us on our social medias, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and use hashtag FOM2020 to be entered for one of our amazingly exclusive raffle items. So there's going to be one or two lucky winners tonight, and it might just be you. 2020 has been a very difficult year. There have been a lot of challenges presented to us in terms of health, safety, politics, housing, and the many issues that will be facing our economy moving forward. But despite all of this, MANA as an organization has been moving forward. We've been doing everything that we can to help everyone in the community have safe, quality, affordable housing. That's what our mission is, to provide for any and all those in need, to bridge the economic wealth gap that exists in the U.S. and still specifically here in D.C. And we're doing all we can and we're going to continue to do so. Quite a few different exciting things going on. We have an award presentation. We will be discussing what MANA has done so far in 2020. And we'll also be discussing a little bit of a sneak peek into what 2021 holds for the organization. So thank you all for joining us. And I want you to just settle in, grab a drink, get a snack if you'd like, and just stay with us for the next few minutes as we move on to the next bit. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the evening. I'm Reverend Jim Dickerson, the founder and CEO of MANA, and I'm here to thank you all for being here at our 25th annual Friends of MANA event, the most unique event that we've ever had uh, being uh, conducted virtually. I want to thank the board. I want to thank the staff. I want to thank the sponsors and the donors especially, all the volunteers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this evening we want to uh, celebrate and highlight projects that we've completed, projects that are in our pipeline. Right now we have just completed our Hunter project, which is 12 brand new townhomes for sale uh, with buyers who are already in the process of going to settlement, getting the financing, getting through the whole process, exciting first time home buyers. We're very excited about our 12 units at Hunter Place Southeast. So that's very exciting in the city to have 12 new affordable home ownership units. We also have 131 units in two different locations that are rentals, helping residents stay in buildings that were very uh, poorly managed before and had uh, lots of problems in them. So that's one at Hanover and one at Tivoli. 131 units of beautiful new renovated uh, properties in a partnership with TM Associates that we're doing this. And we have over 450, get that, 450 units in our production pipeline right now. So MANA never quits. We are, on, we are going, we are adapting, we are finding ways to continue to do this as we always have, and we want to really urge you to stay with us and to support us as never before as we continue. We want to also tell you some more exciting news about our home ownership training and housing counseling program. Uh, we, are exclude, we are all virtual with our counseling these days. And uh, it has really been a very good thing for us because we are reaching more people. We have over 300 folks in our housing counseling program that we're reaching in the Home Buyers Club training and one-on-ones with our housing counselors. And so we're very excited about our housing counseling program and the growth in it. We're expanding into Prince George's. We have uh, several locations here in the district that we're operating out of, and we are extremely excited about how we're moving forward and expanding our efforts in that area. We have a, an exciting program planned for you tonight. You will get to meet uh, some of our newest homeowners, Yasmin and Allison, and uh, get to hear their story and be inspired by them and be inspired by it. They are the reason for all that we do and we are so grateful to have them here tonight. And we will be also having our silent auction, our traditional signature event, uh, our silent auction, and we are very excited. So stick around and stay with us for the next few minutes. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Thomas Cavanis. I'm the director of Manor's Home Ownership Center. As many of you know, this is my favorite time of the year. Not because of the holidays, but because of Friends of Manor. It gives me an opportunity to thank you and to let you know how appreciative we are at the Home Ownership Center here at Manor for your continued support. It gives me great pride to be able to introduce to you our first homeowner of the evening, Miss Allison Carpenter. My name is Allison Carpenter and I am 24 years old and I am a proud new homeowner in Congress Heights. I also work at the DC Council as a housing policy analyst. I've lived in DC for seven years uh, and I've lived in Congress Heights for the last two years and I knew that this was the community that I wanted to be a part of for, for as long as I possibly could. So buying a home just made sense. I was supported by my mom and my sister who really pushed me to do it and uh, I'm really happy I'm now a homeowner. I'm here to stay. I decided to become a homeowner uh, because I've dealt with housing insecurity for a, a long time. Uh, growing up, I probably moved 17 times uh, before I turned 18 years old, before I went to college. And so uh, I never really had stable housing uh, and always uh, was on the wrong side of an eviction notice. And so I knew that I was going to work really hard uh, out of college to just find home and kind of ground myself. And so buying a home was just, uh, it made a lot of sense. When I decided I was going to buy a home, I knew that a lot had to change about my lifestyle and I, I was paying for subscriptions I didn't know I was paying for and I was treating my credit cards like an extension of my paycheck and so I realized that I had to make a lot of uh, serious mature decisions with my money and, and be more uh, intentional about how I spent my money. I'm uh, so grateful for the incredible programs that the city has available to homeowners um, but they're not the easiest to navigate and so I'm so grateful that MANA stepped in to really help me see the big picture from getting my credit together and getting my spending under control. Um, those were things that MANA was just absolutely uh, amazing in helping me and supporting me. It was a huge relief becoming a homeowner because now this is mine and you know and I can change the fence outside if I want to or I can you know paint the wall without getting permission so I feel really empowered now being a homeowner and I can make decisions about you know what I want to do with my space. You can't go around my neighborhood or the city without hearing about the great work that man has done, whether it be through a groundbreaking or a ribbon cutting um, of one of their projects. Um, so I've, I've just seen their work all over the city and, and figured, let me see if they could help me with my big goal of wanting to buy a home. Getting the key to my new home was an unreal experience. I think I just cried. Um, I was just so emotional just because of what it represents in my journey of like housing, my housing journey and just like not really having a place to call like home for a long period of time and just knowing that like when I move in, like I'm gonna be here for a, a long time. And so I was really relieved and also just so grateful um, because I know it wouldn't have been possible without MANA and without the great programs that DC has available for people like me. I absolutely love my new house. I mean, it's perfect. It, it's not just the great home for like right now, but it's a home that I can really see myself like building a family in and like growing in. Like it's a home that makes sense for the future. Um, and I love this neighborhood. I've, I've lived in Congress Heights before, but before I lived on a, in a different part of the neighborhood, now I live, you know, a few minutes away from the new arena, the entertainment sports arena, where my favorite team, the champs, the Washington Mystics play. And so I am just thrilled to be here. Uh, I look forward to once everything, all the craziness dies down, just walk into a, a, a WNBA game. So yeah, I love my home, I love my neighborhood, and I, I just couldn't be any happier. To anyone who wants to become a first time home buyer, I'd say call Laura, call the team at MANA, um, sit down with them and, and figure out what your plan is. Uh, I, I've tried to buy a home before. This wasn't my first time. I tried to buy last year and the year before that. Um, but I needed a team. I needed a support group. And I, I found that at MANA. Um, so I'd say start there. Um, but also just, you know, think about how it plays into your larger financial goals and um, whether it makes sense for you. But yeah, talk to MANA. They'll help you figure out everything. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our second homeowner of the evening, Yasmeen Arrington. Hello, my name is Yasmin Arrington. I was born and raised in Washington, DC, and I'm the founder and executive director of Scholarships Inc., a DC-based nonprofit that provides college scholarships, mentoring, and a support network to children of incarcerated parents, inspiring them to complete their college education. I bought my first home in 2020. 
Uh, and I live in the Brookland neighborhood in Northeast DC uh, by Fort Totten Metro Station. For centuries, um, black people have been largely disadvantaged and disenfranchised uh, in the United States. And being a homeowner means that you have equity. Um, it, it means that you have an asset. And it opens up a lot of doors that if you're not a homeowner, you otherwise would not have. For me, being a homeowner means building equity, establishing myself, and securing um, a place in, in my hometown uh, and a home that will hopefully perfectly last for generations to come. I feel a big sense of relief I feel a big sense of accomplishment. Um, I'm on my way to, to building generational wealth, uh, which is a sense of empowerment for me and for my family. And also it's a, it's a wonderful gathering place. And so we'll have lots of holiday celebrations here, you know, maybe host Thanksgiving and host Christmas. My home is becoming a place of warmth and family and friends. Um, in COVID-19, it looks a little different, um, but I, I look forward to hosting many, many holiday celebrations um, and parties uh, and, and even fundraisers and, and board meetings in the near future. I love my new home. I love the fact that I have a washer and dryer inside of my home, inside of the unit. Uh, the appliances are all uh, nearly brand new. Um, I love the granite countertops. Uh, it's very modern. There's a lot of light and I love light. I love sunshine. My advice for someone who wants to become a first time home buyer is definitely go to MANA. Definitely get a first time home buying counseling from MANA. My MANA counselor was there to support me, to be a cheerleader, uh, and, and to help to push me to the finish line. Do not give up. Do not give up. If you have found a property, your counselor is there to support you, and I'm a part of the MANA network, and I'm also here to support you and be a cheerleader for you as well. Just whatever you do, do not give up. So it's my great honor and my great privilege and my great joy to uh, uh, honor someone who is so deserving of our John Dar Award. As you know, John Dar was one of our most loyal and wonderful board members who passed away, sadly, a few years ago, and we miss him greatly. And we've dedicated this award to someone who has been instrumental in Mana's life, instrumental in our mission, and instrumental in our city, and I would say our country and affordable housing and helping people move up and out of that low income, low wealth uh, category of poverty, et cetera. John Dar was a very important person to us and this is a very special award that we hand out each year that we award it. And it's my great joy and my great honor tonight to uh, present this award to Mike Tierney, Michael Tierney, who has been our, uh, the last seven years our board chair and a board member for many more years and a great friend and ally for many more years. We, Mike and I go back uh, several years ago when he came to Washington, D.C. as the director of the local LISC, uh, Local Initiative Support Corporation, and then he moved on to be a senior vice president of the LISC national organization. But he has been there with us, for us, from the beginning, he came, he's made such a great difference uh, as Oramanta Newsom, who he brought into LISC and succeeded him, has set, used to say, we grew up together, uh, MANA and, Li and uh, LISC. So LISC is, has been an incredible support, key supporter for MANA, and as a result uh, of, of us being where we are, and Mike has been that great gift to us all these years and to many others like us throughout the country. So we wanna honor Mike tonight and all of his service. And this is a great opportunity to just say thank you to Mike and also to his wife, Van. Uh, she's instrumental in this as well, but this is a special gift and a special honor and a special privilege that I personally have and that we at MANA have to just simply recognize him and to say a deep, deep thank you for all that his 
he's given us and his service to so many more like us. So this year's John Dar Award goes to Mike Tierney. And thank you, Mike, can't thank you enough. And we appreciate you so much. Good evening. My name is Mike Tierney, and I'm the outgoing chair of the MANA Board of Directors. I've known MANA and the Reverend Jim Dickerson now for almost 30 years from when I came to Washington to direct the DC office of the Local Initiative Support Corporation. And over those years, working locally and nationally for LISC, I've had the opportunity to continue to observe and support MANA's work on affordable housing in the district. And to conclude that under Jim Dickerson's leadership, MANA is one of the most effective nonprofit housing organizations in the country. So when it came time to retire from LISC, my first priority in terms of local involvement was to join the MANA Board of Directors. And for the last nine years, I've had the opportunity to work more directly with Reverend Jim and the board and the staff on continuing and expanding MANA's affordable housing work. During the first year of my involvement on the board, I overlapped with John Darr and came to know about John's many contributions to MANA. So it is a distinct honor to be named uh, for an award in John's name. I plan to continue to be involved in MANA on the board of directors. MANA will continue to face significant challenges in creating affordable housing in the district in the months and years ahead. I wanna thank MANA and Reverend Jim for the John Darr Award and I want to thank all of you for attending this virtual Friends of MANA event tonight and look forward to your continued involvement in support of MANA going forward. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kenneth Fuller. I serve as vice chair of the board at MANA, and I'm really excited tonight. First of all, thanks for being with us at this Friends of MANA event. I've been on the board since August of 2014, and I've seen a lot of wonderful things occur during my service um, at MANA. Even this, this year, we have delivered brand new for sale affordable housing for new families, first time home buyers, which is, as you know, MANA's bread and butter, which has been doing for more than 30 years now. And we've also um, put together a pretty meaningful portfolio of rental housing, and we're doing great work there. At this time, man is in the best financial condition it's ever been in, in its history. And so when I think about everything that man has accomplished over the last several years and, and where it is today, I couldn't be more excited to welcome a brand new CEO to take us to the next phase of our evolution. Sasha Angus will be joining us starting on Monday. She's currently Senior Vice President at the McCormick Barron Companies and she's been running several large complex uh, projects for the last decade and, and nearly two. And we're really privileged to have her join MANA with uh, a deep passion to develop affordable housing for, for families to establish themselves in their communities and in their homes so that they can be great contributors to society and, and participate in, in all of the, uh, the benefits that that are available to them. This is her deep passion and she's excited to join us. So it's my privilege to welcome her to the MANA team and to introduce you to her tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Sasha Angus. Good evening. I am Sasha Gay Angus and I am the new president and CEO of MANA Inc. It is a pleasure to join you all today on this special occasion where we reflect and celebrate all that we've accomplished in 2020. I am honored to have been selected to lead an exemplary organization built on the foundation of supporting families so they may realize the familial and financial dream of affordable home ownership. This is still out of reach for too many Americans, so the work of MANA is undone. I am thrilled to be working with Reverend Jim on this important leadership transition, and I'm committed to build on the legacy of this organization, which is to change lives, change neighborhoods, and change history in Washington, D.C. and surrounding communities. My vision for MANA is to help grow the organization by creating 
both affordable rental and ownership opportunities for low-income families across the region to promote racial and ethnic diversity and racial equity through homeownership counseling and development. And frankly, to build on the existing strengths and track record of this organization that's been successfully built over the last 40 years. I believe relationships are the currency of life to achieve success. And I intend on building positive working relationships, both internally within our organization and externally with all of you, our stakeholders and our partners. We are undoubtedly at an inflection point in affordable housing currently where the demand in this region continues to grow and where many households continue to be burdened. Jobs may not be coming back as quickly enough and we could see some market rate migration to affordable housing. We do not know yet how long we will be in this COVID crisis. And so we have to remain nimble. We have to be creative. We have to innovate, but we have to remain steadfast in the work. And that is what I intend to do. I thank you all for the opportunity to serve as your leader. And I ask that you join me in continuing the work of MANA. Good evening, I'm Bill Winston. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm the Chief Administrative Officer here at MANA. And I'm happy to be a part of this year's Friends of MANA and happy that you can be a part of it too. It's a little different than our past Friends of MANA, totally virtual, safe distancing uh, in the midst of this uh, public health crisis. But you've taken the time to be with us and we appreciate that so much. This is our 25th annual Friends of Manor reception and auction, and so glad that you can be a part of that tonight. While a lot has changed about our reception and auction this year, there's one thing that's still the same. It's here to support affordable housing in the nation's capital, and there certainly is a great need for that. You've heard the testimonials this evening with moving stories, how much of a difference they make in people's lives. And we're glad that you're here too, so that you can be a part of that, making a difference in the lives of others. Our auction is started this evening, and you have an opportunity to participate in that and support affordable housing through your bidding and winning in the auction this year. A lot has changed about our auction this year, but there's one thing that remains a constant, and that is our annual Friends of Mana reception and auction is a way to support affordable housing in the nation's capital. That's what Mana has been doing for 38 years, and We've been doing it with your help, and we're grateful for that. We're asking for your help again this evening as we seek to make affordable housing available to another generation of Washingtonians who want to remain in the district, own their own home, and build equity uh, for their future and for the next generation. A way you can help with that is by supporting this evening's auction. We have over 30 items donated from local businesses that are available this evening for you to auction, to bid on, to be a part of. And all that goes to support the affordable housing work that Friends of Mana does. 100% of every dollar you contribute to this will go to that cause and for that purpose. So our auction is live now. You'll be seeing the link to the auction site on your screen now, and it will stay live for one week until November 12th at 1159 p.m. This is a great way to do your Christmas and holiday shopping as well. Find those stocking stuffers that you're looking for or gifts for loved ones. As I mentioned before, it's a way to support the auction, uh, but it's a way to support affordable housing and to support those that you've heard from tonight. We heard those beautiful testimonials from folks about what a difference home ownership has made in their lives. And this is a great way that you can make a difference by supporting the auction. We have crafts, there are classes, there are uh, other gift items that are there. One of my favorites, the four tickets to see Mount Vernon, the gardens and the house, a great opportunity. We hope you avail yourself of those opportunities and that you'll be a part of MANA by supporting the auction this evening. Thank you again for being a part of Friends of MANA this year. We're so glad that you could join us. 
And now please support our auction. Click that link and support affordable housing and the wonderful people that you've met tonight through the testimonials you've heard. Thank you again. So we all know that we're faced with some unprecedented challenges. Uh, the very fact that we are doing this virtually is a sign of that, but it is also a sign that we find a way. Where there seems to be no way or there seems to be difficult, manna began when the interest rates in our country was, were 18%. No one was loaning money to low-income people. No one was loaning money to the neighborhoods of D.C. that we work in. And, in 1982. And with all of that, and people didn't believe that they could own a home, even though they wanted to desperately. We had a lot of people wanting to, but they didn't believe they could actually do it. We found a way. We bought that first home. I borrowed money from a friend. My wife and I put up our house. We cobbled it together. And that family is still in that home that we sold them, the very first family. So I know that we, MANA has been a group that's always done what seems humanly impossible. So I know that we can move into this new and very challenging time in a way that is even more creative and uh, more productive than ever before. And I am looking forward to it. We've heard from our amazing homeowners uh, inspiring homeowners. We've heard from uh, the staff. We've heard from about our projects and all that we're doing and all that we've been able to do this year. And I'm so proud and so inspired by what we've done this year. And we are so excited that you're going to stick with us and continue to go forth as we achieve even more in the coming year. So thank you for tonight. This is the end of our program tonight, but it's more to come for MANA in the future.